All right, today I'm going to assemble a buzzkill cable to show those who would like to create one how it's done. Um, you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Uh, it has a USB port on one side and it has a USB on the other. It has um, two magnets that uh, form the coupling and this coupling brings together some pogo pins and some pogo receptors. To kind of see an earlier prototype, it's a little bit jacked up, but um, you'll see that the wiring goes from the uh, wires of the USB devices and they are held in place by um, a couple of plastic pieces to just prevent them from moving around and assist during the assembly process. Um, you'll see here laid out that I, I have the parts. Um, you know, in here I have my pogo receptors and my po pogo pins and my my screws. And I, I'm going to be using disc magnets today. Great, so let's get started building this thing. First we start by stripping some wire. We're using 28 AWG wire, so we use that setting on the wire stripper to remove just a couple of millimeters of wire. You're going to want a trusty helping hands to help hold the pogo receptor in place. This takes a bit of dexterity, but if you get it just right, you can clamp the clamp on the wider end of the pogo receptor and it will hold firmly in place. Once you've done that, I like to get a bit of solder flux on the end of a wire and I also like to take a bit use the wire to take a bit of that flux and add it to the pogo receptor. This helps with the soldering process. Then you're going to want to tin your soldering iron, and then you're going to want to tin with solder your pogo receptor and the wire so that you can then solder the wire to the pogo receptor. Soldering the wire to the pogo receptor can be a bit tricky, and one thing you want to make sure is that the solder stays as much as it can on the front side of that smaller part of the pogo. You don't want it to pull up around the edges and remove that area in between the larger part of the pogo receptor and the smaller part of the pogo receptor because the small part goes in the hole of the face and the large part holds on, on the other side. So if there's too much solder on the outside, it won't be able to slide into the hole and you're going to want to make sure that the wire does not um, go onto the edges as well. So it's really tricky. You're going to want to line it up just right and you're going to want to hold it in place while the solder hardens so that it is as straight as possible and not overly bent or curvy. So you want to create four of those pogo receptors with wires attached. And then you can slide those into the holes on the face part of the coupler. And uh, just kind of notice whether you can have all the pogo receptors flush in the holes. Uh, you know, everything should be flat and straight. It is okay, you know, if you need to take an object to uh, push them into the hole, but as long as they 
fit in there and they're secure and they're flat. That's what you want to see. All right, so I'm getting my gloves on. In reality, the type of super glue I'm using today, I probably don't need to take this step, but many of you may be using E6000 glue or some other heavy duty glue where you're gonna wanna have this step of protection. So once I have my gloves on, um, I get my plastic jig pieces ready. So these have channels in them and they're gonna hold the wires in place. So first you add some glue to these pieces. Once you're done adding the glue to the pieces, you can then start putting the wire in the channels. You may want to add more glue here and there. It's very important to make sure that the jig fully closes on itself because it's the perfect size for inserting into a slot on the case of the coupler. So just take care and then use a clamp to clamp that down. You may notice that I have the pink face of the other side of the coupler inserted onto the face of this one. This isn't really necessary, but I do it to kind of keep the pogo receptors in place while I'm uh, jostling everything around. But then once you remove that, if you've put that on there, you may want to check and make sure the receptors haven't jostled around too much uh, and push them back in place if so. Then we just gotta wait for the glue to dry. So there may be a better way to go about this, but the way I usually tend to is I've made my wires a little longer than they need to be when I assemble the face part of the enclosure, and then I'm gonna to wanna to trim them during this process. So once the glue is dry, I insert the face into the slot and mark off where I should trim my wire. Now that my wire is all nice and trimmed, I insert the face part back into the enclosure. And now I need to solder these wires to the USB port. This is a tricky task. I'm not gonna lie to you, it isn't any fun and it's my least favorite part, but it's gotta be done.
And once you've got your soldering done, now it's just time to put on the lid. So a lot of the time, I might just put on one or two screws at first uh, because you'll also notice that I haven't added the magnets. I like to make sure that everything's soldered correctly first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the other side and we're going to run a test before we glue in the magnets and fully make sure the lid is on. And you'll see all that in part two. Thanks for watching.